Hey guys, Bugcat7 here. Okay, it is Sunday, January 27, 2019. I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Please do hit the like button, guys. Very important, okay? Please do. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, well, um, I just finished uh, producing a video, this, this video right here. Um, called Catimbo, Peru, Galena, New Mexico, um, similarities, and, um, you know, we talked about the similarities here, and when I came up to this part in the video, I started talking about geopolymers and how this pre-Incan civilization that created all the megalithic block there in Peru could have been making this block. They could have had the recipe for basalt and granite and all these other kinds of stones. All the ancient peoples could have had the recipes for geopolymer concrete. And um, a fellow from the, uh, a, fellow, a friend of the channel, the Ancient Alternative View, produced this video about Roman concrete because I had also mentioned in the video that they still have never solved the mystery of the uh, recipe for the Roman concrete. So, you know, in any case, he produced this video here, and like in all his videos, um, you know, at the, towards the end of the video, he sort of um, implores the audience to comment, you know, on what we think about it in Austria. So instead of, you know, I let him know what I thought, and I said, you know, instead of writing out a long commentary in the, on his uh, video there, that I just go through this. You know, again, this is, you know, what he presents there is not necessarily what he believes. He's just asking, he's presenting a mainstream sort of, uh, you know, news item, and he's asking the audience what, what we think. So... You know, it's, uh, he's not necessarily endorsing it. He just, you know, he's just presenting these things and asking a question. Okay, so in any case, he produced this video about Roman concrete, the secret uncovered, and basically, it was uh, it covered this article, which is from the University of Utah. Okay, by this lady um, researcher. Marie Jackson, and it, if you go through the search here, when you go to Marie Jackson, um, University of Utah, Roman Concrete Recipe, okay, so, you know, you can see all these articles here, you know, that basically, like I was mentioning in my video about um, moving stone um, on my channel, uh, let me see here, yeah. which was this video right here, okay? And I was saying about how, you know, when you put a search in for this, you'll come up with, uh, you know, all these different articles, but they're duplicates of, you know, the same article. And, you know, same with this, with this lady here, you know, just the duplications of the information put out by the University of Utah. So, you know, I mean, it says here that, you know, it's, um, the see, you know, they found out the secret and, you know, it said on my buddy's uh, channel there on his video, Roman concrete, the secret uncovered. So I was just curious about it and I looked it up and I, you know, I read through a number of these articles when I did a search, you know, to see what this was all about, you know, and, um. In any case, um, I'm going to go through this article that the University of Utah, you can't get more mainstream than that. This is not an alternative view. This is a mainstream view. So, you know, for me, it's like this. University of Utah, mainstream. This is the same people who have hoven weep or hoven weep in their state who would you know give the wrong attribution don't acknowledge Galena don't acknowledge Frank C. Hibbert this is the same people who are the gatekeepers on that you know that site the hoven weep site in their state or whatever so you know in any case let me go through this article here because 
quite frankly, it's ridiculous, and I'll tell you why. Okay, I'm an expert at, you know, breaking down mainstream articles for where they got, you know, their foot in their mouth. Okay, so let me read it to you. It's a short article. We go through it. <clears throat> Around A.D. 79, Roman author Pliny, Pliny the Elder wrote in his Naturalist Historia that concrete structures and harbors exposed to the constant assault of the saltwater waves become a single stone mass, impregnable to the waves and every day stronger. So here you have this romanticized statement by uh, Pliny the Elder, you know, to start us all off with. Okay, let's go. He wasn't exaggerating. While modern marine concrete structures crumble within decades, 2,000-year-old Roman piers and breakwaters endure to this day and are stronger now than when they were first constructed. University of Utah geologist, geologist Marie Jackson studies the minerals and micro-scale structures of Roman concrete as she would a volcanic rock. She and her colleagues have found that seawater filtering through the concrete leads to the growth of interlocking minerals that lend the concrete added cohesion. The results are published today in American Mineralogist. Roman concrete versus Portland cement. Romans made concrete by mixing volcanic ash with lime and seawater to make a mortar and then incorporating into that mortar chunks of volcanic rock, rock that aggregate in the concrete. The combination of ash water and quicklime produces what is called Pozzolanic reaction, named after the city of Pozzuoli in the Bay of Naples. The Romans may have gotten the idea for this mixture from naturally cemented volcanic ash deposits called tuff that are common in the area, as Pliny described. The conglomerate-like concrete was used in many architectural structures, including the Pantheon and Trajan's markets in Rome. Massive marine structures protected harbors from the open sea and served as extensive anchorages for ships and warehouses. Modern Portland cement concrete also uses rock aggregate, but with an important difference. The sand and gravel particles are intended to be inert. Any reaction with the cement paste could form gels that expand and crack the concrete. This alkali silica reaction occurs throughout the world and is one of the main causes of the destruction of Portland cement concrete structures, Jackson says. Jackson's interest in Roman concrete began with a sabbatical in Rome. She first studied tufts and then investigated volcanic ash deposits, soon becoming fascinated with their roles in producing the remarkable durability of Roman concrete. Along with colleagues, Jackson began studying the factors that made architectural concrete in Rome so resilient. One factor, she says, is that the mineral intergrowths between the aggregate and the mortar prevent cracks from length lengthening, while the surfaces of non-reactive aggregates in Portland cement only help cracks propagate farther. Further, farther, or farther, further, one or the other. In another study of drill cores of Roman Harbor concrete collected by the Romacons project in 2020, 2002 to 2009, Jackson and colleagues found an exceptionally rare mineral, aluminous toberamide, al toberamide, in the marine mortar. The mineral crystals formed in lime particles through the pozzolanic reaction at somewhat elevated temperatures. The presence of al toberamide surprised Jackson. It's very difficult to make, she says, of the mineral. Synthesizing it in the laboratory requires high temperatures and results in only small quantities. Okay. Seawater corrosion. For the new study, Jackson and other researchers returned to the Romacons drill cores, examining them with a variety of methods, including micro diffraction and microfluorescence analysis at the advanced light source beam light 12.3.2 at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. They found that altomerite, a related zeolite mineral, philipstein, formed a pumice. A pump, uh, formed in pumice particles and pores in the cementing matrix. From previous work, the team knew that the pozzolana curing process of Roman concrete was short-lived. Something else must have, must have caused the minerals to grow at low temperatures long after the concrete had hardened. Quote, no one has produced torberite at 20 degrees Celsius, unquote, she says. Oh, quote, oh, except the Romans, ex exclamation mark, unquote. Quote, as geologists, we know that rocks change, Jackson, unquote, Jackson says, quote, change is a constant for earth material, so how does change influence the durability of Roman structures, question mark, unquote. The team concluded that when seawater percolated through the concrete in breakwaters and in piers, it dissolved components of the volcanic ash and allowed 
have new minerals to grow from the highly alkaline leach fluids, particularly altomerite at and Phillips site. This altomerite has silica-rich compositions similar to crystals that form in volcanic rocks. The crystals have platy shapes that reinforce the cementing matrix. The interlocking plates increase the concrete's resistance to brittle fracture. Jackson says this corrosion-like process would normally be a bad thing for modern materials. Quote, we're looking at a system that's contrary to everything one would not want a cement-based product, unquote. She says, quote, we're looking at a system that thrives in open chemical exchange with seawater, unquote. Modern Roman concrete. Given the durability of advantages of Roman concrete, why it not it used more often, particularly since manufacturing of Portland cement produces substantial carbon dioxide emissions? Okay, so this lady's a greeny, guys, okay? Not saying it's bad or wrong, but you know, I don't care what side you're on, is there such a thing as getting carried away? Quote, the recipe was completely lost, unquote. Pay attention to this. The rest, quote, the recipe was completely lost, unquote. So I guess it was lost, but it's found now, Jackson says. Okay. She has extensively studied ancient Roman text, but hasn't yet uncovered the precise methods for mixing the marine mortar to fully recreate the concrete. So if the recipe was lost, but she's not sure of the methods yet. So that's one thing that's not done about it. That's an important part of it, okay, scientifically that hasn't been done. Romans were fortunate in the type of rock they had to work with, she says. They observed volcanic ash grew cements to produce the tough. We don't have those rocks in a lot of the world, so there would have to be substitutions made. She is now working with a geo geological engineer, Thomas, Tom Adams, to develop a replacement recipe. However, using materials from the western U.S., the seawater in experiments comes from the Berkeley, California marina collected by Jackson herself. Roman concrete takes time to develop strength from seawater and features less compressive strength than typical Portland cement. For those reasons, it's unlikely that Roman concrete could become widespread but could be useful in particular contexts. Jackson Risley weighed in on a proposal, Tidal Lagoon, to be built in Swansea, United Kingdom, to harness tidal power. The lagoon, she says, would need to operate for 120 years to recoup the costs incurred to build it. Quote, you can imagine that with the way we build now would be massive corroding steel by that time, unquote. A Roman concrete prototype, on the other hand, could remain intact for centuries. So Jackson says that while researchers have answered many questions about the mortar of the concrete, the long-term chemical reactions in the aggregate materials remain unexplored. She intends to continue the work of Pliny and other Roman scholars who worked assiduously to discover the secrets of their concrete. Quote, the Romans were concerned with this, unquote, Jackson says, quote, if we're going to build in the sea, we should be concerned with it too, unquote. So, okay, so they supposedly found the recipe and you just don't know how to mix it right and how it was mixed and the uh, seawater washing through the concrete actually hardens it and all that kind of stuff helps you know the seawater and all kind of stuff so let's go through this a little bit over here okay because this is uh, kind of stupid okay if you're paying attention okay okay so the, she's saying this stuff is made with seawater and seawater is salt, which is a chloride, and it's highly corrosive. In most concrete, Portland-based concretes, you get what they call efflorescence, okay? I owned an old house that was built in 1927 with different layers of hand-poured concrete as the foundation, and I had a lot of trouble with efflorescence, the salts leaching to th the water leaching through and the salts from the concrete leaching out onto the wall forming crystals. It's a very common problem with concrete everywhere, so... You know, you can read about it in lots of different things. There's articles about it everywhere. And um, we'll get to this later in a second. But in any case, all right, so, you know, we she's saying salt water, but it seems highly unlikely. I mean, the, the, the recipe calls for water, ash water, and quicklime, no mention of seawater at all. And it seems highly unlikely. You're telling me the Romans didn't know that chlorides, okay, were were corrosive 
you got to be kidding me, okay? One of the oldest recipes for an acid, okay? Very simple. Even alchemists knew this. Anybody of this time knew it. The Romans knew all about it, okay? Right? We talked about the etching that the Hohokam did. They figured out how to make an acid that breaks down seashells, okay? A very common and simple acid that anybody can make, and you and I can make it. And if you have old rusty tools and other things that have been corroded or whatever, you put this in a solution, okay? of salt and white vinegar, okay, and it will strip the metal of the rust, it's a, it's a basic low-level acid, okay, but it's highly corrosive because it uses salt in combination with the vinegar, they knew all about this stuff, don't think they didn't, that's as old as the hills, okay, Everybody knows that salt and white vinegar produces a, a, an acid. Since ancient times, cavemen knew that, okay? Soon as somebody figured out what vinegar is and put a little salt in there, figured it all out a very long time ago, okay? So the chances of them adding seawater to their concrete mix is quite frankly ridiculous, okay? Then she says it's the action of the seawater washing through the porous concrete that activates this certain chemical producing this l torblermite or whatever it is and a philistine or whatever the heck it is there okay but what about the the buildings made out of concrete on dry land where there's no seawater washing through it. I mean, are they just implying that the seawater added to the mixture is enough? But now they're saying that the seawater washing through the concrete is actually what prolonged it. But what about this on dry land? It doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry, it doesn't make any sense. Not considering all these concrete, Roman concrete structures on land where there is no seawater washing through there, strengthening it and you know, adding to their durability, they still don't know. You know, maybe this applies to the stuff in the harbors, you know, or whatever, but it doesn't apply to the stuff on dry land. You know, it's very big. And look, you know, I went through this in one of my videos, the one on Mew in Atlantis about prof scam by this author Charles J. Sykes about how all these college professors are all a bunch of, you know, shit bags and do nothing and they got these pet projects going on. They need funding, so they got to come up with something interesting, okay? You know, I think that, you know, this, this fella, Charles J. Sykes, starts, starts his book with a quote from H.L. Mencken, one of the most prolific writers in American history, okay? Very well-respected guy. And the guy said, if you want to improve your college education, you got to start by burning all the campuses down and hanging all the professors, okay? That's what H.L. Mencken said, okay? These people get involved, and this is one of those things, the way it's worded, the way that it's titled, how seawater strengthens ancient Roman concrete, okay, well, that's one separate subject, but, you know, finding the recipe and all, this is, those are all totally different things, you know, substitute recipe, whatever. So, I guess she might be referring to this alkali silical reaction that occurs throughout the world. It's one of the main causes of the destruction of Portland cement concrete structures. Is she talking about efflorescence? Why, why not just say that if, that, if that's what she's talking about, or it's not that at all, but what about efflorescence? There's no mention of that at all. Hmm, that's kind of weird that no mention with a, a, an article about Roman concrete and concrete in general, no mention of efflorescence, unless that's what she was just referring to. I don't know, but okay, so she had this sabbatical there, and you know, she says about how this stuff is a rare thing. They, look, they can't Synthesizing in a laboratory requires high temperatures and results in only small quantities, but hey, to just, you know, wash some seawater against that stuff, it happens right away. It's no problem whatsoever, you know, and it, if they got the recipe and everything recreated in a laboratory, let's see you re recreate it. You have it, but apparently they don't have enough of it, so, you know, that's part of the secret you know, that they supposedly have unlocked, that they apparently haven't unlocked, okay, so, you know, I mean, 
Yeah, and who knows if the Romans even knew about these qualities or the chemistry of the concrete. They could have got the recipe from somebody else. That's even if you believe the Romans. If you follow like New Earth and Sylvia, you don't believe they were ever was like the Romans or whatever. The Romans, Greeks were all one civilization that we don't know anything about. The timeline, when people mention timelines and Romans, you got to be suspect of all this stuff. We don't know our history. We don't know our timeline. All these references is a ridiculous and all that kind of stuff so just forget about that stuff so in any case this is rare you know minerals that you can't even create in a laboratory but it just happens out there no problem at all okay and how it's you know antithetical and counterintuitive that you would add salt to concrete well you bet it is and i'm sure the, the romans or whoever they were didn't do that <laughs> It's ridiculous to even think that. I'm sorry. They knew about the corrosive properties of salt and chloride. It was very simple to find all that stuff out. It was already known about it, creating acid with white vinegar, the oldest recipe in the book. Come on. This is nonsense. And this whole thing where the recipe was completely lost, okay, but she hasn't uncovered the precise methods for mixing it. Okay, so, you know, it doesn't, I don't know, we, Portland cement, we mix up, you just add water, they've already got all the stuff in there or whatever, this seems rather dubious here, sounds like it's, it's making out to be more complicated than it really is, but I want you to look at this, okay, that's what she says, and, you know, what about all these concrete structures on dry land, it's, the whole thing is nonsense, but, Look at this, follow me with this, okay? Because I'm an Electric Universe guy, I'm a Velikovsky guy, I'm a Thunderbolts, Wall Thornhill, all that kind of stuff, and look, okay? I think the Romans did it like this. Curing concrete with electricity, but you know, oh no, no wait, the Romans, they didn't have electricity. They didn't have anything like that, they didn't, you know, forget about the big dead battery and, uh, you know, all the, you know, art done inside all these buildings with not an ash mark in there from, you know, torches and stuff. You know, forget about all that stuff. They didn't know about electricity, they say, okay? Electric curing of concrete was first devised in Sweden, who's to say, about 40 years ago, and the method was applied to buildings and subway construction in Moscow, Russia. Reports of this work were published in 1932. Nothing further was heard of the system for some years. In 1947, Hokkaido, Japan, field and laboratory studies were made in electric concrete curing in connection with U.S. Army Camp Crawford at Madamini, at Madamini. During four years and five winter seasons in the spring of 1951, data was obtained from about 80 structures using some 70,000 cubic yards of plain and reinforced concrete, okay? And the results of it and everything, but there's other studies on this, okay? And I think, okay, that the reason why they can't figure it out is because you couldn't figure it out. A geologist couldn't figure this out. Okay, maybe somebody from the Thunderbolts project who is a geologist could figure this out. They didn't do it with special chemical mixtures or whatever. They did it with electricity. That's my hypothesis, okay? And as you know in my other videos, like Prove It, for instance, my Prove It video, which is a great video, by the way. I go over the Giants, the William A. Ritchie stuff that found with the Giants and the 14-inch combs and stuff. In my video, Prove It, I go over what these people actually know. And it's like this article here. They know very little. And most of it is hypothetical. And in order to prove it the way that they imagine it to be, it's going to take thousands of hours of research and, like, you know... Sykes said there from Prof Scam, you know, this pet project of this professor's may be just a complete waste of time because he's looking in the wrong places. Okay? It seems highly unlikely that this woman's hypothesis is correct to me. So, you know, I just ignore it because there's lots of reasons here. Here's the nice lady here. 
she wants money for her research so she's got to come up with something good something tasty like they found the recipe now all they got to do is figure out how to mix it up which you know Betty Crocker could do in like five minutes or something like that she's missing it they cured it with electricity boys and girls Bud Cat 7 says so okay that's my hypothesis just as good as any of these people's right so in any case guys again nothing to my buddy there at the uh, alternative the ancient alternative view but there's gaping holes in this woman's story so big you can fly fleets of 747s through and uh, you know 10 Queen Marys and all that kind of stuff this thing is so, you know, in its earliest stages, and to me, it looks like it's going nowhere. She's going nowhere with this stuff, because we got all of these buildings on dry land made out of concrete. There's no seawater washing through there, okay? You know, hardening, hardening the concrete over long periods of time. It's not, that's not what's happening. If there's salt in there, that would be coming out. Trust me, it's extremely corrosive, chloride. All right, guys, anyway, I just figure I, you know, give my commentary on the fellas' video. I let them know that I was going to do it. And uh, like I always do with these mainstream articles, I just, I tear them apart, okay? They got holes in there, gigantic holes, and, you know, you know they have to sensationalize these articles that they produce so they get you know, continue get funding for their research. You know, they need funding for their research. And they, they can't go back and say, well, I didn't really find anything because they ain't getting no more money. So they got to come up with something, even if it's something, you know, going, you know, some blind alley, some dead end or whatever it is. All right, guys, that's it. Budcat7 signing out. I'm, I promise you another video pretty soon, okay? I'm trying to get, you know, these videos out while I still have, you know, the thoughts and ideas in my head. So, all right, guys. Anyway, Black Cat signing out. Peace.